All right, everyone, we made it downtown. Time for the full review of the Nike Zoomfly 3s. That's right, there they are. First, we're gonna roll out, and I fully realize that I am way late to the game, probably two to three months late. Uh, yeah, I think I was seeing full reviews of the Zoomfly 3 published in July uh, on other YouTube channels out there, so you gotta follow your passion in this world and mountain running is definitely that for me. So that's why this past summer, I'm, I'm basically in catch up mode for all of these road running shoes. And I should mention that this is definitely a road uh, neutral uh, daily trainer. Although you might be able to use this for racing. I'm gonna talk about that back in the studio tonight. All right, let's roll out, lace up, and get rolling here. Full review, oh yeah. And also I've got last year's iteration. So these are 2019. These are the 2018, the Zoom Fly Flyknits. We're gonna do a little comparison in the studio tonight. All right. So I went, uh, just so everyone knows, I went true to size and you can see I've got a, a little over a thumb width. So who knows, maybe I could have gone a half size down. Uh, but I'm glad I, get, I did not because Nike is usually a little narrow through the, uh, the midfoot. So I think the true to size was good for me. You can see that thumb width there on the, uh, in the toe box. Uh, yeah, just so you know, true to size. I, I, it's tempting to go a half, half size down, but I'm glad I did not. All right, I think we're ready. Okay, there we go. So here are the Zoomfly 3s, and I will say that the, the ride compared to the Carbon X, I would say is quite a bit different. I don't know if there's anybody else out there who's uh, tried both shoes out, but the, the Carbon X definitely feels a little more firm through the gait cycle, which might be good for racing, okay? I like a little more of a snappy, firm landing for racing. Um, and of course, both shoes have Carbon fiber, carbon fiber plates in the midsole. So uh, part of that carbon fiber plate revolution. All right, onward and upward. We're moving on to uh, uh, massage real quick. The legs are a little tired. They're a little tired. And it's to be expected during this big week of training. This is the biggest week of training leading in to Amsterdam. All right, see you in the studio. All right, everyone, let's rock and roll. Full review of the Nike Zoomfly 3. And yes, that three, represents the fact that this is the third iteration in this lineup from Nike. Here is the 2018 iteration, the Nike Zoomfly Flyknit, and this is the Zoomfly 3, a completely different upper from 2018. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, it's a neutral road trainer, or is it a racer? We'll get to the bottom of that uh, by the end of this vlog. And let's dive into a few specs. Oh, by the way, I've taken it to 60 miles now, so we're past the 50 mile mark. And all right, let's start. First of all, with the stack height. What are we doing here, Nike? What are we doing? 40 millimeters in the heel, 32 in the forefoot. All right, everyone, I'm editing and I'm researching for all of you, super psych. That stack height that I, that I just told you is not correct, okay? Uh, I've been, I knew it was too tall. I was like, there's no way it was 40 and 32. So 
I've been looking around, researching, trying to figure it out. So it's it's 36 millimeters in the heel, uh, 28 in the forefoot. That is that is the actual stack height. I can confirm that from a couple reliable sources. Sorry about that. Again, if I say something wrong or incorrect, I will I will correct it. And now I'm not going to set up the cameras again in the studio, so I'm filming on my phone right now. Okay. Roll the tape. For an eight millimeter drop. Now, what's interesting, so that's that's high. That's very, so this falls into definitely the maximalist category for uh, road shoes. Now, what's interesting is this guy has a 10 millimeter drop from heel to toe. So they, they decided to drop the drop by two millimeters from 2018 to 2019. And as far as weight goes, so we're looking at nine ounces in men's size nine or 255 grams. And let's dive into the Zoomfly 3 upper. Probably the biggest update from 2018 to 2019 is what they did to the upper. So as you know, Zoomfly Flyknit was big in 2018. The Nike Vaporfly 4% Flying it. That's why they uh, called that shoe that is because of this upper. And so this vapor weave upper is what they're calling it in 2019. It's supposed to be uh, more, well, it is more translucent, so you can actually see through it uh, a little bit better. It's supposed to be more breathable. And also, uh, what I would actually really agree with is resist water better, meaning when you're sweating or if you're running in wet conditions, rain or puddles or whatever the case may be, it's not supposed to retain, the, it's not gonna absorb the water, I should say, uh, into the upper because it almost has a little bit of a, I don't wanna say plastic feel, but it's definitely not a fabric feel, if that makes sense. So I could see, I could see, and I actually have tested, it doesn't, um, it doesn't hold the sweat in as much when you're pounding the miles out. Now, yes, I'm gonna go there. The question of the day, this might be a hot topic, oh boy, and I realize this is very niched down question of the day, but I'm gonna go there. Okay, I don't wanna start rumors, <laughs> but I actually need some help. I need some research from all of you out there. Does anybody know, and I think I saw an article last week, but I can't find it, unfortunately. I thought I saw an article, I think it was actually a news source out of Kenya. Does anybody know, uh, and this is not the question of the day, but does anybody know if Kipchoge, Elliot Kipchoge, when he tries to break two hours in Vienna, is he gonna wear a, uh, is he gonna wear an upper, a fly knit upper or a vapor weave upper? Does anybody know? Um, I thought I saw an article and I, it could not, it may have, you know, it's the internet, but I thought I saw an article where he is going to use Flyknit over Vaporweave. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. If anybody can find any information on what Kipchoge is going to wear in Vienna, I'd be fascinated to hear. But the question of the day is for those out there who have tried both Flyknit and Vaporweave, what do you prefer and why? And so that is the question of the day, flying it or vapor weave. And again, I realize that's very, very specific. Okay, moving on to that midsole. Again, huge stack height. I do not feel unstable that high off the ground. Um, now you're not gonna get a lot of ground contact feel. That's kind of the opposite of what's happening with this midsole. Now it's React Foam. So it's not Zoomax Foam, it's React Foam from heel to toe, this entire midsole with a carbon fiber plate inside that midsole, tucked away in that bed of midsole. Um, so definitely springy, okay? I, I think that's the best word. I wouldn't say snappy or pop, maybe pop, but I would say springy. It just has a good little spring to it um, through that midsole. So I'm, I'm enjoying the ride, I must say. And especially when my legs feel tired and I feel like I need a little help to get done with a, a harder day or a longer day, uh, I, I tend to grab for that midsole, that, that React Foam midsole. And on to the outsole, the bottom of the shoe, a pretty big change from last year's 2018 iteration. I don't know if you can see that there. It's just a big, it's a big update. Um, a different uh, tread pattern or yeah, outsole pattern. Gosh, what else? I mean, similar rubber placement as far as durability to create a little more lifespan to the shoes um, and a little different shape through the toe box especially. I don't know if you can see that. Just a different shape to that toe box. Again, nothing, I would say, okay, I'll say this much. Now it's coming, it's kind of coming back to me. I think I feel more stable in the Zoom Fly 3 
compared to the Zoom Fly flying it. It's, a it's just a little wider landing area through that outsole. So overall, I'd say a, a good update, not a drastic update, but a good update to the outsole on the Zoom Fly 3. So we already talked about the fit of the shoe as far as comfort goes. It is very comfortable when you slide your foot into the cavity of the shoe. Um, it has a little bit of uh, a little bit of that booty construction inside there, and it feels good. Now, is it more comfortable than the Flyknit? I don't know. Honestly, I like that feel of the Flyknit, so I don't know if I'm gonna say it's more comfortable than the Zoom Fly Flyknit, but overall, the comfort is there. The midsole comfort is there with that high stack height. I don't feel like I'm pounding pavement when I'm out there uh, on the hard roads. Um, and for a positive and a drawback, I'm gonna go with that uh, that springy feel that stack height is pretty serious it's just that nice spring when your legs are tired i i i appreciate it in fact i'll just tell you right now i've got a 15 mile tempo on sunday so come back for to see if i can hold that 545 pace again for 15 miles i took the hoka carbon x's out yeah hoka carbon x's out uh the last tempo run i did i'm probably gonna do the zoom fly threes for the next tempo run so stay tuned there's a bug in here stay tuned for how that goes uh and then the drawback for the zoom fly 3 i think nike is maybe overthinking the upper a little bit this is again this might be a little out there but i think they can simplify the vapor weave construction um i think there's maybe just a little too much layering happening and again that toe box scrunching I just, I don't know. I think the vapor weave is, I think it's moving in the right direction. I don't think they should go necessarily backward to fly knit, but I do think they're, oh, it just seems a little too complex uh, through that upper. And again, just that scrunching. I just hope they can iron that out literally for 2020. How will I use the Zoom Fly 3? Definitely tempo and threshold runs moving forward. However, I will say, I think you could definitely use this shoe for racing from 10 miles, yes, up to the marathon, absolutely. Now, is it the lightest shoe out there? No, but it'll do the job just fine. In fact, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I see quite a few people in this shoe in Amsterdam. I wouldn't be shocked at all. Um, and then that price point, 160, oh yeah, first of all, well, okay, no, let's go price point first. Um, $160, hmm. I've been thinking about this and I think they probably nailed it from a business standpoint. I think a lot of people will pay that. I would actually, I would frankly wait until Christmas time. I think the price will come down soon. It's close, it's close. Again, it's like that 10, if it was 150, I think it would be spot on. 160 is just, it's just a little high for me. So they're really, really close from a business standpoint. I bet a lot of people are like right on the brink of deciding, should I buy it, should I not buy it? And I bet a lot of people will buy it. And for the score on the Zoom Fly 3, we're gonna go with eight out of 10. I almost went 7.9 but I think it earned an eight in my books. And maybe after my 15 mile tempo on Sunday, we'll see if it earns the eight out of 10 officially. And that is my full review of the Nike Zoom Fly 3 after 50 miles. Overall, I'm very, very pleased, but I'm excited for 2020 as well. All right, thanks for being here, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for just uh, supporting this channel and pushing it forward together. We are in this together. You guys rock. All right, a couple old vlogs for all of you. An old Nike Vaporfly 4% Flying It vlog on the right. And on the left, we're going to throw in the uh, Nike playlist, the Nike running shoe playlist on the left. If you really want to dive into a ton of other Nike vlog running shoes. Uh, there we go. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.